to our life group video. Um, today I have with me a whole bunch of amazing people. Um, we have, I have Dina, our outreach director with us today. She's amazing and does all kinds of um, really awesome, like just, just speaking into the community and going out every day and doing all kinds of amazing things. Um, we have Sarah, our prayer director. She is um, doing an, uh, some amazing things recently with with getting the prayer times um, set up in our prayer chapel. And just really, it's been amazing to see how God is shifting the way that we pray and worship this season. Um, and then we have Zach with us, who is our, what was it, potentate, uh, especial. <laughs> I know he's, Zach is our, Zach is our facilities director. Um, so he does a lot of amazing things, just keeping the building going and, and all the different projects we have going around here. So, um, and my name is Chris and I have met you all many times previously on these videos. So, <laughs> um, Today, um, PK talked to us about the uh, missions launch that we have. So we are, um, he, he, you know, reminded us again of, of the, the Great Commission, which is to go out into all, into all nations and make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey the commands of Jesus. And the promise on the end of that is that he will go with us and be with us to the very end of the age. So I just love that, like, you know, Jesus is sending us this, but he's not sending us alone by ourselves to go out and do this for him. He's saying, like, I want to partner with you to go out and do all the amazing things that I have to do with you. Um, so if we are with God, if we like Jesus do what we see the Father doing, we will go to the nations with him. We will we will also be able to bless the nations. We will... Um, give of our finances, of our times to be able to go out and do those things. Um, three of the ways that Pastor Kevin talked about us partnering in that are going, giving, and praying. Um, so some will have to go. <laughs> some of them are, some of us are going to stay, but um, I was just wanted to put the question to you guys. Have you ever been on a missions field before, um, whether, you know, locally or abroad? And what does that look like for you? So Dina, have you been on missions? So um, because I do local outreach, um, I had a different perspective on missions. I finally got an opportunity. It was kind of a lifelong bucket list to go and do a missions in my field before this, which was a dental missions trip. It was oh. a medical missions. Mm -hmm. And it changed my perspective on my job here locally forever because the country we went to had no resources at all. Um, the pain that they were living with, uh, dental pain, they had for 20 years. Wow. There wasn't an ability to get help if we hadn't been there and shown up to do it. So when I came back here, I felt a lot more optimistic about what we can do right here locally in mm, Lansing yeah. because there are resources out there. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of connecting the dots. And uh, if the resource doesn't exist, we can create it. So we really have the ability to uh, make a difference here. That's awesome. And uh, that missions trip was uh, just phenomenal mm. yeah. before I started this job to That's see awesome. that perspective. Very cool. What country did you go to? Um, I just blanked. Okay. <laughs> it was Sorry. just yeah. a little island. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> and, yeah. I'm that's sorry. cool. No, that's I'm great. Good. Thank you. Sarah, have you been on missions? Yeah. So um, many, many moons ago when I was a student in spin, <laughs> uh, we went on a handful of missions trips. Um, the most memorable was Costa Rica. Um, just the hunger for God was it made me realize like, oh my gosh, I, this is so easy for me here. I don't have to travel miles and miles in the back of a truck to come to some <laughs> huge tent service yeah. to encounter God, like yeah. to, to gather with other believers, you know, it's like, wow, like how privileged am I that I get to just like drive up to the church mm -hmm. five, 10 minutes away to gather with other believers. So that was so impactful to me, like people's hunger. And then, um, when I went to ministry school, I went to India, was the big missions trip we did. And that was just amazing, like life changing. I mean, it's like, I feel like it's the thing everybody says when they come back from mm -hmm. foreign missions trips. They're like, oh my gosh, like they're just like weepy because you yeah. real. it's just such a perspective shift it of is, like yeah. everything that's so easily accessible to us, everything, you know, that we have here. Um, that people don't have. Yeah. And so to be able to see that and to be able to to love on people 
the most impactful thing about India was um, we went to actually, so Mother Teresa has like many houses she yeah, set up yeah. there. And it was her house. It's called the House of the Dead and the Dying. Um, and we just got to sit with people who were basically terminal. Wow. We didn't speak their language. And we just, like our team went there for like one afternoon and just helped empty their bedpans, like mm. helped to like, my favorite part was sitting by this one woman. Again, we didn't speak the same language, obviously, but just like looking into each other's eyes, it sounds cheesy, but like the language of love, yeah. like to be able yeah. to just hold her hand. And like, I could see when she was in pain and just like not really say anything, but just look into each other's eyes. I just mm -hmm. was like, it was just, I think it impacted me way more than impacted her, yeah. you know, to be able yeah. to like love like that just felt so like God's love between us and in that situation felt so tangible. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I talk, I talk, like I've spent a lot of time on the missions field and that is one of the things that like, you know, being a full-time missionary, seeing like all the short-term teams come, mm -hmm. like it was amazing to see how much of a radical shift in the short-term teams there was yeah. in compare, even in comparison to the people that they were blowing yeah. down and like blessing. You're going <laughs> like there it to is like, really... I'm gonna go change yeah. the world. And yeah. it's like I'm wrecked. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm changed. totally changed now because yeah. just seeing Jesus and that yeah. was cool. How about you, Zach? Have you been to missions? Uh yeah, I've been to one um uh, one trip overseas and yeah, it was um uh, I think the, the the interesting thing was they were building a uh, campground, and uh, a lot of the, it was targeted to a lot of young people, and it was also going to be used by like a, a teen challenge, uh, addiction recovery center. Um, and but what they like to do is get like a lot of the young people would come together for that summer and have like a like a, just a really coming together experience because when they went back out to the world, the churches and their schools were indoctrinating against yeah. what they were coming together for. And it was just a, just a place where they could come together and uh, solidify their faith uh, before going back out and, and struggling, feeling, you know, probably very much alone. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. So I love how each one of you kind of touched on, like, even how that, like, those missions experiences changed how you how you even view ministry here you know and and so i mean dina you get to do this all the time like can you talk about like what are the opportunities around here and at, at mount hope specifically that you get to work sure. with yeah i could talk about that all day um, <laughs> basically serving in general is just love in action so mm. it's stepping out um just uh, out of the overflow of jesus love you step out to serve in any way possible we try to create a lot of different serving opportunities so that if there's something that is on somebody's heart, like I'd like to get out into the park and serve the homeless, or I'd like to visit senior centers or widow help the widow's ministry, yeah. all of those lanes, you have an opportunity to serve with others and then find the identity that Jesus has for you through serving. That's it awesome. helps you create <clears throat> and identify that. Yeah. I'm sorry. <clears throat> anyway, so um, any opportunity to jump in anytime anyone has an idea, the Holy Spirit's dropped something on their heart and we're not doing that, you could just give the church a call. Call me. <laughs> and uh, yeah. we'll create an opportunity to serve. There is endless um, endless things to plug into here at church. That's awesome. Yeah, I love all the like... You know, sometimes I'll be teaching a class up here and during a food distribution, and you'll see like this line of cars mm -hmm. all the way through the parking lot or like, you know, just even I love seeing the pictures on Facebook of like, you know, you, I was talking to you earlier and you said that this is today is your fourth Valentine's Day so far because oh, of all the different. Week. Yeah, this yeah, week. So week. just being able to give like all yeah. the different amazing opportunities to just go love on people, you know, and like I love that. You know, just that, just that you get to express that in so many different ways. Then simp to simplify it, it is just Jesus love in yeah. action. We are an example of that out in the community by our actions. So um, I don't even know where I heard it this year, but it's um, just resonated with me. Fewer voices, more examples. Yeah. It's mm. kind of what the community like needs. That. And that demonstrates uh, Jesus and Christianity to people. That's awesome. And it doesn't have to be complicated or yeah. overproduced. It's just show up mm -hmm. and love people. Very cool. So how can how can um, our viewers today, how can they be able to um, sign up for different outreaches or get connected with that? 
Okay, there are lots of ways. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of different apps. There is the Facebook. There is uh, Instagram. There's our church's website. You can sign up on Planning Center. If you just want to find out, you could call the church and um, somebody will share the details. But we usually have something going on every week. We yeah. have smaller things that aren't out there. But if somebody's free a certain day of the week or would like to plug into a lane that we don't have, have listed. Um, I have other nonprofits that are running running things every day, so um, we can help people plug in and find their lanes pretty easily. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, so Zach, you get to, um, this is a weird transition, but you get to, you know, I mean, Dina's talking about like how she gets to give up her time a lot and, and resources in that way. Like, um, would you just talk to us a little bit about what it looks like to give, um, financially to missions or even like on the missions that you've gone on? Like, you know, I love, I love how the Lord like opens doors and provides for people to even step out like and do that. So, yeah, I mean, um, on that, that's, that's, uh, I can give a really good example because when we went to go on that mission trip, um, I think Christian and I was our first year in, uh, that we were married and we were looking at the price tag on it because it's like we both felt led by the Lord to go on that one. But then it was like about three times what we could afford. So we are just like, <laughs> yeah. you sign up by faith. And then it's just like, but we received as we needed um, without really talking to anyone about it, just large anonymous gifts where it became a reality. And then, um, we were able to go in and see, you know, uh, to have that experience overseas and, um, but I think whenever you whenever you listen to the Lord on something and he gives you something that's along his heart, you know, as far as going, um, you know, and giving, uh, he'll provide a way for you to, to yeah. make it happen. So That's so good. Yeah. Have you seen that, like, you know, consistently through, like, your, you know, tithing and giving, like, how he's, like, kind of made a way for that abundance to be there? Yeah, yeah. It uh, And sometimes it seems like you're, <laughs> you're, like, barely keeping your head above the water, but it's like, Oh, this is unexpected thing came in just when you mm-hmm. needed it. Or, yeah. You know, something along those lines. Or, That's so cool. Yeah. I was talking to one of their MHLS students the other day um, who's going on the Guatemala mission strip coming up. And mm-hmm. she put on Facebook just an ask to, like, hey, can anybody so into this? And literally less than 24 hours later, she put a, a response video on there saying that she had not only had it covered, but it was more than what she had asked for. And so just, I love how the Lord just shows up and, like, you know, like, it's so cool. Um, yeah, so Sarah, can you talk talk to us about like prayer opportunities and what that looks yeah, like? Yeah, for sure. Um, so recently, just this month, we um, expanded our, our Wednesday night prayer gathering, which met every Wednesday at 7. We expanded that time instead of just coming together once a week for prayer. Um, we trickled over into the neighboring days. Yeah. So um, our goal is to have, well, our big vision is to have worship and prayer coming out of our prayer room 24-7. Um, so the steps that we're taking to get there and move towards that is um, every day of the week. So wow. we're starting with just three days a week, yeah. um, Tuesday nights at 6 p.m., Wednesdays at 7, and then Thursdays at noon. Awesome. Uh, we're having worship and prayer in the prayer room um, an hour. It's... Uh, PK said it so good last night. He was like, we're um, seeking his presence, presence and petition is how he Mm. said it. He's like, we're going after his presence and then we're going to petition for some things. So um, we honestly spent about half the time like worship, just seeking his presence, Um, ministry. Our first ministry in prayer is ministering to the Lord himself. So in worship um, and then petitioning for some things. There's six main areas um, that we really feel like the Lord is calling us to pray over as our main prayer targets this year. Okay. And one of them is the nations. Yeah. Um, so among those three prayer times, which will soon become five or six, you know, in coming months as those fill up, we'll expand. Um, but among those, it's up to the prayer leader of those six areas, like what they're going to pray over that time. Um, just last Thursday, Marianne Saunders had us pray over missionaries. So she had a long list of names um, of missionaries we're currently supporting. And uh, just to be able to pray for them by name, I think yeah. was a beautiful thing. For sure. So one of the main six areas is the nations. And um, I just want to read this real quick. So Revelation 7, 9 says, after this, I saw a vast crowd too great to count from every nation and tribe and people and language standing in front of the throne and before the lamb. They were clothed with, they were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. And they were shouting with a great roar. Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the lamb. So 
here we have a beautiful picture of heaven, like yeah. of the throne room, and it's not just Americans. <laughs> it's not just really? us. Really? <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Um, who yeah. are in the throne room. It's like we're so, um, because this is where we're from, like yeah. we're so apt to like, we need to pray for America. And yes, we do. We need to pray for Israel. The Bible says to. Yes, we do. But in the throne room is every language, every mm -hmm. tribe, every tongue. It also says in Joel 2, two the Lord's intentions are to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Yeah. Um, and so it's so vital and important that we pray for all nations, yeah. every tribe, every tongue, that we ask God to do what he intends to do. Yeah. We ask God and petition with the Lord that he would pour his spirit out on all flesh because that's what he wants to do. So yeah. it's really just partnering with his plan and petitioning for, for that sure. yeah. in prayer. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and I love that like PK in his message made a point about like how God, when God asks us to give and it sounds crazy, it is really an invitation to follow him, right? You know, mm -hmm. so like that's like, I love that you said it that way because it is like the Lord is the one that goes before us and behind us. He's the one that creates yeah. those opportunities. He's not asking us to just like run off without him somewhere. Yeah. You know, he's like, yep. like that is, you know, and, and I, I was just even talking to somebody the other day about like, you know, kind of the goals that we have for our church this mm -hmm. week or this year. And, and they were like, wow, those are, those are some heavy weighty goals. Like, I don't know, like that sounds like a lot of work. And I'm like, you know, but like, I mean, the reality is though that like God is inviting us yeah. to see him do that. Though. Yeah. Like, you know, he's inviting to us to see part. his yeah. sudden victories, to see mm -hmm. his, you know, him to go before us, him to show up in all these ways. Um, and so I would just, I, you know, just you guys, as you're watching, I would just challenge you to even like when you do hear the Lord ask you to do something, whether that's, you know, giving or praying or coming to some of the prayer times mm -hmm. or, or being able to go on a mission trip yourself, um, to view that as like the, the Lord inviting you into something that he's going to provide for. Like, it's mm -hmm. not something that like you're stuck on the hook, like, oh no, like, <laughs> you know, and cause I mean, that's, that's definitely how I felt the first couple of times the Lord like asked me yeah. to do something crazy. I was in Mexico studying Spanish and was fully planning on returning to the United States at the time when the Lord just out of the blue told me to stay and go to Bible college there in Mexico. And I was like, I don't even speak the language very well. You know, like I could talk about the weather, but not go to Bible college in Spanish, you know, and, and the Lord, like, you know, 10 minutes later, some guy walks up to me and is like, Hey, I felt like the Lord was asking you to go to Bible college in Spanish this Come year. On. Like, how do you feel about that? You know, and I was like, it's just like, it was like the Lord confirmed it. And and it was amazing, you know, me moving into it, moving to Mexico at 17 years old, like just totally wildly outside of my expectations of where my life was going and like becoming fluent within two, two months of moving down there, like just totally fluent Spanish, like just the Lord just opened up opportunities and he's the one that made it happen. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't out of my effort. It yep. wasn't out of my understanding. Like yep. I'm smart, but I'm not that smart. You know, like, <laughs> It was definitely the Lord showing up in yeah. that. And so, um, yeah, like it's so like, I would, I would just really, I really want to encourage you guys to, to take that as an invitation to see what the Lord will do, like to, to let him prove his goodness to you. That is mm -hmm. specifically this year, the Lord has challenged me to, um, increase my financial giving. Um, so to like, because he wants to like the way that he, he phrased it for me was that like, he wants to show me the sudden victories in it. He wants to like, you know, not only just in missions, just in, a, in some of these things, but like even getting out of debt, even getting out of the, you know, like just, mm -hmm. just like watching him, like totally transform and revamp the way that I even look at finances in my personal life, you know? So, um, I think that the Lord has a lot in store for us this year and I'm just excited to step out and see what happens. So, yeah. Um, so I would just, I want to ask you guys at home, um, it, what are some crazy asks or what are the amazing challenges that the Lord is putting to you in this season? Are you willing to step out in faith with me and see the goodness of the Lord and see him prove himself in that? Um, I would love to just uh, invite you and to check out the opportunities that are on the screen right now to different ways to get pledged um, for financial giving, for sign up for prayer times, or to get even involved with the mission strip. Um, there should be some um, in links and different things on the screen right now. And I would love to, to just be able to part for us to be able to partner with you and what the Lord is doing in your life this year. Thank you so, so much for joining us and we'll see you guys next week.